This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Hello everyone. Now I mentioned in my last video that I might do a follow-up video on a really dumb Captain Marvel theory that I had that might not be so dumb because it turns out a lot of people on Twitter had a very similar idea. They sent it over to me. If you haven't seen my trailer breakdown, maybe check that out first. I'll link it below because it ties into a lot of what I'm going to be talking about here. Plus, I don't think anyone's found every Nick Fury yet. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, it's a pointless thing that I did. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about that and also a bunch of comments uh, from the last video on YouTube and also on Twitter where people have shared their own theories and I thought, Hey, what a good opportunity to talk about it as a kind of a follow-up thing. I do this every now and then, so why not? Anyway, thank you for everybody who requested that I talk about that, including Twist of Eight. I appreciate it. Alright, so here's the theory. It's basically that the Carol Danvers version of Captain Marvel, she's a Skrull with the memories of the original Carol Danvers who died in that explosion. Maybe the Jude Lord character, whether he be Yonrog or Captain Marvel or whoever, takes her off world and extracts her memories and she dies, puts those memories into another body, a Skrull, and then that person thinks that she's Captain Marvel. And I guess in a way she would be because if you got the memories of a person, I guess that is you in a way. Alan Moore's Swamp Thing did, did a similar thing back in the 80s. His version of Swamp Thing, Alec Holland, isn't actually Alec Holland. Alec Holland died, but his memories were absorbed by Swamp Thing. There's also precedent for this in the Marvel Universe. The original Captain Marvel who died was then replaced by a Skrull who thought he was the original Captain Marvel. And he ends up doing a bunch of heroic deeds and sacrificing himself. But the point is that he thought, initially at least, that he was real, that he was Marvel. And the thing is, the real Carol Danvers doesn't even need to show up. You could just leave her as a Skrull because with a lot of Skrulls, my understanding of it, once they've taken a person's form and powers, they can't transform back. I mean, it's the same with Loki. He's not Asgardian. He's a frost giant. So yeah, she could just be a Skrull and stay as a Skrull. And there's a few hints towards that in the trailer, how her memories of Earth are vague. Anyway, I think it could be interesting. The other thing as well, she could be, she could also just be a Kree hybrid. Or maybe she's pure Kree and she's got the Carol Danvers memories in her. I don't know, I think it might be an interesting way to do it. And also you're kind of combining a few of the Captain Marvel characters into one. They don't strictly adhere to any of the comic book origins in these movies. So yeah, I think there's a bit of wiggle room there. Could be a way they take it. Or not! Okay, this is from Michael. I'm telling you now, the end of the movie is going to be identical to Alien Covenant. Fury versus Fury Skrull, leaving one of them to punch their own eye out to prove that they aren't a Skrull, but still leaving the ending ambiguous. Oh yeah, I can see that happening. A Skrull transforms into the person they're fighting, kind of like how Wolverine fought Wolverine in the first X-Men movie and it's going to be interesting to see who turns out to be a Skrull the entire time because there's probably some secret sleeper agents in there that will be unearthed. Uh, it's from William. I just want this movie to fix Carol Danvers the way Iron Man the movie fixed Tony Stark. These Civil War comics got to stop happening etc etc are pointless and so on. Yeah no I can understand that point. I don't mind Civil War 2. I like the the idea more, I think, than the execution. There's also a what if story where what if the original Civil War kept going, which I think I like a little bit better from memory. But yeah, I think they're going to play around with the mythology of Captain Marvel and her role in the universe because it's changed quite a bit over the years in comics. And to be honest, I'm not really sure where that character is at at the moment. Also, she's not super well known. So like when the first Iron Man happened, they made a bunch of changes to Tony Stark that people were just fine with because he wasn't a super popular character. All right, this is from Sean. I'm 100% sure that maybe... Doesn't sound like 100% Sean. That's all I'm saying. The little cut above his eye is definitely perhaps a CGI pretend thing like when they made it look like Thanos didn't have all the stones in that trailer or that Thor had an eye. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't mention this because all of these Marvel trailers, they seem to do that nowadays. They'll put characters in scenes that they're not in, like Sean mentioned with the stones in the glove, uh, Thor's eye. They make a bunch of changes either to avoid spoilers or just because, you know, filmmaking is a process and things kind of shift as we go and with technology you can move people all around the place. So yeah, that is very possible that in this scene he won't have an eye and this is just kind of a cover-up thing. Good work, Sean! Uh, Alex says, Bet's now on for them to de-age Stan Lee for his cameo. Not sure why, but I think it'd be a nice little nod to the number of de-ages characters. Oh yeah, I, I think they could, but I'm not sure what the point of that would be. Because he's popped up across time. He was in the first Captain America as the age he was at the time when that movie was filmed. And also because he's got links to the watches, I think he can just appear pretty much anywhere and he remains looking the same. That being said, yeah, why not? They could de-age him. It might even be something they do after... You know, he passes a bit down the line. You know, make him appear like he did in the 60s. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, Hulock says, It would be awesome if Alexander Pierce shows up. That would be awesome. I really like that character. I think he's one of the better Marvel villains, and I think that's probably to do also with it being Robert Redford. And Robert Redford's terrific. But I believe after his current film, The Old Man and the Gun, I think it's called, or some variation on that, that he's retiring. So I don't think we will 
see him return. So yeah, unlikely, but you never know. Maybe they can just plonk him in the background or something using CGI. Who knows? Uh, Cody says in 921 of your video, isn't that the Google Mail logo? Yeah, it is. I don't know what, yeah, I don't know what that's about is when did Google Mail change to that and when did this picture come out? I'm not sure exactly, but yeah. What a weird coincidence, if it is a coincidence. Agent Eggboy says, Why does Sam Jackson look like Lawrence Fishburne? Or Lawrence Fushburn? What are you from New Zealand? What is that? Oh, you know what? I've been, my mistake. I, you know see, what? See, you're, you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> That's my fault. Oh, I know boy. that. That was my fault. Uh, my mistake. You know what? We don't all look alike. Fog, oh, you're exactly right. all black and famous. You are we all guilty. Don't look alike. I am, I, I am guilty. Um, I am busted. I am guilty. He thought guilty. you were Bob Dylan. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're the entertainment you, reporter. I know. Well, you're you're the entertainment reporter right. for this station. Fog. And you don't know the difference between I know. Chris says, blurry guy looks a lot like Jude Law's mysterious character. Yeah, I did think that. And then I thought, ah, oh, but he's not wearing the same kind of outfit as the Jude Law character with the, with the green on it. But again, they can alter these things a lot before they come out. And he is kind of Jude Law shaped. So that could very well be Jude Law. I still think there's a fair chance that Jude Law will turn out to be the main villain of the movie and that the Kree aren't exactly the nicest people in the universe, which they've proven not to be also in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I talked about in the last video. But yeah. There's a very good chance that that person could be Jude Law. What Austin says here ties into what I was just talking about, where he thinks Jude Law is Yon Rog as well, but Marvel's explosion gave Carol her powers. I think he was fleeing the Kree, and then Yon finds Carol and uses her as a weapon for the Kree to spite Marvel. I think there's definitely more to something than that relationship that they have, and that entire team, actually. I mean, if you look at those characters in the comics, they're not good guys, they're all villains. So yeah, she probably is being used by, if not the Jude Law character, then somebody else she's caught up in like a bigger thing. Yeah, but I don't think this is strictly, yeah, the Kree are the good guys. Uh, Jedwa says, Nick Fury has been a scroll this whole time is one thing I've been seeing on sites a lot. I don't think so. Well, I don't know, obviously, but the only reason I say that I don't think so is because I think he's a constant in these Marvel movies and he's the anchor to Earth for a lot of the Avengers. He's like a through line for everything and I think if they just went, Oh, he's been an alien the whole time and he's been a bad guy. That might undermine all of that. That being said, he could be a good scroll because there are good scrolls. but yeah, it's definitely possible, but I don't think so. But yeah, what do I know? Nothing. Right, I'm just going to put an ad in here just quick, just now. Thank you to everybody who's understanding of this. And thanks to Squarespace as well for sponsoring a bunch of my videos lately. It's been really good. Helps pay the bills. And you know what? It's also a great product because Squarespace can create a beautiful website from their all-in-one platform. And it's so easy to create a powerful online identity because each of the templates is a great kicking off point for a side project or a main job or creating an online store where with Squarespace, you're able to manage product order and inventory easily. And if you need any help, they've got award-winning 24-7 customer service if need be. So why not head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. It's a great service. It's easy to use. It's a link below if you want to check it out. Lee Fenner says after credit scene where she retrieves Ant-Man from the quantum realm? Question mark? Very possible. Absolutely. The thing is we don't know what powers this character has compared to the comic books. Can she even enter the quantum realm? Does she get stuck in the quantum realm at the end of this? I don't know. I think we're definitely going to get a link to Infinity War and then Avengers 4 in the post credits or, you know, maybe even during the film. But I'm not sure it'll be Ant-Man necessarily. But yeah, I think we're definitely going to get something. I say definitely. I don't really know. Jova says there will be a reference to Howard Stark's death given it happened on December 16, 1991, and this movie is based in 1995, 95 to 96. Yeah, it's definitely in that area. It's absolutely a possibility. I mean, there's a bunch of other characters that are around then. You got Hank Pym, Peggy Carter's still around, young Tony Stark. There's a fair few of them. So we might get a few surprise cameos there. Shelfman says maybe Thanos will appear due to it saying he will return. Also, Ronan has to see Thanos. Yeah, I don't know whether Thanos will actually show up in this one. Maybe there'll be a flash forward at the end and we'll see kind of what he's been up to, but I don't think it's imperative that he needs to show up. I'd say there's more of a chance that he'll get referenced because he is this huge force in the universe. And I guess around this time, he's going planet to planet and wiping out half the population. But yeah, we'll see. Our uh, Nerd Chronic says, the Skrulls storyline will be a parable for refugees hiding amongst us for safety from Kree oppression. Yeah, I mean, the Skrulls are traditionally bad guys, but they've kind of moved a bit more away from that. There's, there's more nuance in that race than there were previously. So absolutely a possibility. Uh, Bill says, maybe the pager is key to unlocking her powers. And after the big fight in this movie, her powers go dormant. And when Fury pages her at the end of Infinity War, her powers activate. That could be the reason she hasn't been around helping. Yeah, it's a possibility. I think 
I think though the reason the page has been modified is because she's so far away, whether that be the other side of the galaxy or another dimension or whatever. So I think she's powered up. She's just out somewhere else doing something else, but we'll have to see. Blakeland says, where do you think Captain Marvel will get her new suit from? I think Nick Fury will give it to her. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, maybe it changes color when she kind of fires up her powers because in design, it doesn't look too different from the green and teal one that we see her in. But I don't really know, to be honest. It doesn't look like a shield kind of suit. And if it is a new suit, you've got to have that moment where you kind of stop the movie to be like, hey, look, I made this suit for you. So I don't know, my bet's just on, you know, it changes when she fires up her powers, but really we'll see. CJ Sanders says, Monica Rambeau won't have powers. Right, so quick recap, Maria Rambeau appears in this film and it looks like we see her daughter, who's Monica Rambeau, who goes on to become a superhero. She goes by a bunch of names, but at one time she is Captain Marvel. No, I agree with you. I don't think she's gonna have superpowers at all. I think she's gonna be a kid in this movie, but I think what these movies are doing, and we see it in this and we see it in Spider-Man Homecoming with the mention of Miles Morales, or the hinting towards of that character existing, that they're building towards the future generation of superheroes. I don't want those weapons in this neighborhood. I got a nephew who live here. I think they're talking long term here. Like how we saw the Infinity Gauntlet in the first Thor movie, or wasn't the Infinity Gauntlet, was it not? It's not the point! Fake. But I think they're telegraphing well ahead of time some characters that may or may not show up, at least leaving their options opened. Pronounced Habert says, at the end of the movie, she decides she can't trust anyone on Earth because Skrulls and goes to live in space, which is why she didn't come to help for Avengers 1 and 2. She only came to Earth when half of her friends disappear and she gets a page from Fury at the same time. That's a completely plausible theory. Yeah, it is weird she wouldn't show up for the Avengers films. In particular, the first one. I mean, Age of Ultron takes place over like a couple of days. So I think by the time she even got back, it, it'll all be wrapped up. But yeah, it might take this kind of cataclysmic galaxy-wide event to get her attention. Yeah, so I don't mind that. Adam says Iron Man 2, Guardians 2, and Ant-Man 2 were technically set in the past too. As in also. Yeah. Okay, so I said in the last movie that this is... The only movie other than the first Avenger, the first Captain America, to be set in the past. And I guess I meant another kind of decade than the modern day films. And yeah, technically those films are. I think Iron Man 2 is fairly close to the events of Iron Man 1, despite coming out two years after. Guardians 2 is set close to Guardians 1, despite coming out in 2017, which means it's set in 2014. And Ant-Man 2 was set before the events of uh, Infinity War, or at least the days leading up to the snap. So I can't argue with any of that. Some people also mentioned that Spider-Man Homecoming is set in the past, which it might be. The timeline on that is a little fuzzy. That movie says there's something like eight years between it and the Avengers, which shifted the timeline back two years. So the Avengers was in 2010 and Homecoming was 2018. I think people have worked it out, but then others have said, no, the Avengers are still in 2012 and Homecoming is set in 2020. But also the Russos who directed Infinity War have said in an interview that that mention in Homecoming is wrong. And I'd imagine that's just kind of a Sony last minute edit. I presume, I don't know what's going on there. Also, I think in Infinity War, it said that the Chitauri invasion was six years prior. And if Avengers was set in 2010, that means that Infinity War is set in 2016, which is two years before Homecoming, which doesn't make any sense. Look, whatever way you look at it, it's a bit of a mess. But yeah, I just discount what was said in Homecoming. Timothy says, and this is interesting, I noticed while re-watching Avengers that the old janitor gives Bruce pants and isn't surprised that a giant green dude turned into a human. He said he was waiting for it. You're an alien? What? From outer space, an alien. No. Yeah, that might actually be something, or they might retcon it to be something to make it so. Kind of like how young Peter Parker appears in Iron Man 2. That was a bit of a shifty retcon. So that character, played by Harry Dean Stanton, maybe he did see some Skrull stuff in the 90s. That actor's actually dead now, so they probably couldn't bring him back, or, you know, they could because of technology and wizardry. But yeah, I like that quite a bit as a little bit of foreshadowing. Anyway, I think that'll do it. I do wonder whether a lot of this Skrull stuff is gonna carry over into the other movies. Like there'll be ramifications down the line and people will be revealed to be Skrulls. I don't think you can just go, oh, half of S.H.I.E.L.D. are imposters because they kind of did that already with the Hydra thing. So it makes me think that maybe they're just gonna scrap this Skrull storyline after this movie for now. Also, I think that's a lot to work into Avengers 4 if they followed up directly with Thanos killed half the universe. Also half of S.H.I.E.L.D. are Skrulls. I think that's a bit much for one movie, but hey, you never know. Anyways, if you've got any other thoughts or even theories of your own, I'd bloody love to hear them. Please feel free to leave them below. Or you can at me on Twitter at Mr. Sunday Movies. I've also got an Instagram at Mr. Sunday Movies on Instagram as well. And if you want to check out any other videos, please feel free to do so. Also, as some of you might know, I have a podcast called The Weekly Planet. It comes out every Monday morning. I do it with my good friend Nick Mason and we talk movies and comics and TV shows. This Monday is going to be a lot of Captain Marvel talk, I'd imagine. So look, if you're on the way to work or school or you're not going anywhere, you know, bloody give it a listen, maybe. It's a lot of fun to do and people seem to 
enjoy it a lot of the time. All right, thanks for watching and listening and all of the things that you do in your life. And I'll see you Sunday, Tuesday, or Thursday when there's videos on this channel. Have a fun time, everyone.